Hello everyone, this is Jean and I'm back with another video. So, I present to you my handsome mug, but also the face that launched a thousand Twitter beefs recently. Uh, for those who may not know, this is the redesign of the Mortal Kombat character Tanya. For, uh, as they're calling it, Mortal Kombat 1. As someone who was seven years old when the original Mortal Kombat came out in 1992, I personally detest this name. It's Mortal Kombat 12. I understand why they're calling it MK1, because they're revamping the series. They're doing another new universe thing again. Right? They basically, what, MK9 was a soft reboot of the first three games. MK11 warped and retconned all that. Pretty much nothing from the whole Revenant thing from MK10 carried over. And now they're revamping it again. <laughs> so it's a reboot of a reboot of a reboot. This is why I am an original series loyalist and just think that it just should have stopped after Armageddon. But I have been asked by the lovely, lovely, lovely AL, uh, who's been a long time viewer of, of my channel, to opine on this on video. If you follow me on Twitter, then you already have a decent idea, more or less, of how I feel about this and what I'm going to say. Now, there's been a lot of twi Twitter drama about this, as you can see with this individual's uh, comment here, saying that uh, she's now unambiguously black, right? And I'm not going to delve too much into that, because it would take too much time, but I will certainly leave um, the tweets and the responses to the tweets, so you can decide for yourself who's right or who's wrong. I'm mainly going to focus on giving my opinion on this, or rather I should say my expanded opinion, right? Because I've expressed my opinion plenty on Twitter, but Twitter, or now X is, as Elon Musk is calling it, is still a very limited uh, platform for expressing thoughts and opinions. So I'm going to sort of expound here. And again, uh, AL asked for the video, so uh, here you are, AL. And, uh, Nick, don't worry, I, I know I owe you a video, I have not forgotten, <laughs> I will get to it, but, uh, let me, uh, opine here, so, for those who may or may not know, uh, Mortal Kombat is getting a new facelift, there's a new game, MK12, or its official name, MK1, and the biggest sort of controversy or drama thus far has been the complete redesign of Tanya. Uh, to the point where she's unrecognizable. Now, for those who maybe are not familiar with the series or familiar with the character, I will try to give a brief summary of her up until this point. Uh, Tanya debuted in uh, MK4, which is like 98, 99. It's when the series started first really going 3D, right? And she appeared in Deception, I think. She was in at least one of the uh, 3D era games. I believe Deception. I know she was in Deception. And then she was in... Uh, she. I don't remember if she was in 9. I'm not entirely sure she was in 9, but I know she was in 10. Because that's when they did the whole romance between her and Melina, which didn't exist prior to that. And then she was in MK11, and now she's in MK12, or MK1, as they're calling it. I'm calling it MK12, because that's what it freaking is. But, um... So she's been in several of the games. She's become a sort of beloved mainstay character. Uh, her role in the series is basically to be the sort of evil counterpart to Jade, who is a character who predates her. So where Jade is sort of defined by her loyalty to Princess Kitana, and is typically, you know, a good person, Tanya is, de is uh, defined by her treacherous nature. Right? She is a traitor to the Adenians. She is a traitor to her people. Right? She's a bad girl. Right? Beautiful, but a baddie. <coughs> and after all this time, they've now they've given her a drastic redesign, which for the most part is getting a very mixed reception. Uh, MK, old, old school MK fans, perhaps loyalists, I wouldn't necessarily say a purist, but Loyalists like myself tend to dislike it, others tend to not, and those that don't, that are rather in favor of it, I should say, sort of make arguments like this individual saying she was unambiguously black, or now she's unambiguously black. With all due respect to this individual, 
um, having dreads doesn't automatically mean you're an African American person. Plenty of, of uh, cultures and tribes, you know, wear braids, dreads, locks, whatever it is. Okay, I always took her as a black person, person, or at least inspired by a black person, a black character design, right? In the context of the games themselves, she's not even human, right? She comes from the realm of Adenia, which is like human plus, right? They're basically supposed to be eternally beautiful, or at least long lived and beautiful, because in a Adenia, Adenia, Garden of Eden, you kind of get the theme, right? <laughs> And so now they've made her look considerably older. Now, I know that, that the first thing a lot of folks are going to say, especially those who are in favor of this change, and look, if you're in favor of it, that's fine by me, right? I'm just explaining my how I view it and sort of my issues with it. But if you think this is a fine look and this is fine for Tanya, that's, that's your opinion. I'm not going to fight you on it, right? But, um, I... See, the thing here, now I've, now I've, now I've lost my, my, my train of thought. <laughs> but you see, the thing here is that uh, like she looks considerably older than she's been depicted in previous entries uh, in the series. Let me show you a few examples. All right, so this is her in the most recent game, Mortal Kombat 11. You can see her face is significantly uh, older. Now we have, uh, let me see here. Come on, move it. This is her look, I think, in Deception, or it's based on her design in Deception. So Deception was one of the later games. Okay, so this was her original look. This is how she looked when she debuted in Mortal Kombat 4, which was like 98, 99, so a long time ago. And then you have this design. Come on. This is why I don't like scrolling through things when I'm making a video because it takes forever. And then you have this design, which is inspired by, uh, it's, I, I, I think it's her look in Deception. Or it's inspired by her costume in the MK De Deception games, which came out, I think, the mid-2000s. Because Deception was right after uh, Deadly Alliance, I think. Yeah, you had Deadly Alliance, Deception, they had Armageddon. So that was the middle game. I think that was like on 4 or something. But this is how she looked in that game, or at least that was the design for it. And then you have uh, Mortal Kombat 11, right? And as you can see here on the side, or see with uh, this one here, see if it pops up. Right, you can see that they kind of more or less held to the deception design, right? The long, straight black hair, the bangs, right? The white eyes. You see that reflected here, right? So there was some visual consistency. I'm not going to say it was 100% exactly the same. Mortal Kombat, even back in its 2D days, is, is famous and infamous for constantly switching up art style, character designs, um, fighting styles, play styles. They're always switching it up. But you can see even with, with uh, these three, right, with... Uh, Come on. With uh, her MK4 look, her deception look, which was earlier, and then her look uh, in MK11, that they fairly were consistent, right? It more or less looked like the same or a similar person, especially between uh, 11, I'm oh, sorry, I should say between deception and 11. Right, this is her look in Eleven. The look in Deception, right, is very similar. Right, it's visually consistent. And then you have this, which has no visual connection or no visual consistency to the previous looks outside of the yellow highlights here at all. The biggest problem, and I've said it online is that this doesn't look like Tanya. This is not, this is, how do I put this? This is not a good design for Tanya. I've said that in several Twitter responses. This is not a good design for Tanya. I think if it were an original character, especially one that maybe uh, is meant to be older, like a mentor character, a teacher character, maybe a sort of, you know, wizened old warrior type thing, 
or you can just especially if you want to invoke the you want to emphasize I should say the fact that they're a bit middle aged looking a bit older looking you can make them you know a human right so then you know the whole you know being youthful and beautiful doesn't have to apply anymore right this would be fine if it were an original character, if their own original story, or a character that wasn't often used and often seen. For example, I'm going to uh, see if I have it here. I may not, I may not have it here. Anada. Okay, but for those who may or may not know, Li Mei, who, who debuted in the 3D era games, I want to say Deception? I'm not entirely sure if she was in MK Deadly Alliance. She might have been. I'm trying to remember. But I know certainly she was in at least one or two of the last three games before the original series ended with Armageddon in 06. Right? After more or less being sidelined uh, throughout the reboot which started with Mortal Kombat 9, they've now finally brought back Lee Mei. And Lee Mei... Uh, is in a much more modest outfit now. She has a very different appearance than what she had in the 3D era games where she honestly looked like Melina, which was honestly my biggest issue with it when she first debuted. I couldn't tell if she was supposed to be Melina or not. Right? But no one's complaining about that because she's not an often seen character. When, they, when a character is not often seen or when they're still new, you can alter a lot of things about them. Mortal Kombat did this way back in the day with Raiden. In the very first game, Raiden's a villain. He destroys the world when you play as him. And then MK2 comes, and he's the good guy everybody's pretty much known since. So when a character is not used often, when they don't play a large role, or when they're still very new, you can do things like drastic changes to their personality, drastic changes to their moral alignment, drastic changes to their physical appearance and their visual design. And you take a character that has been in the series for well over a decade, it's had numerous appearances, and their moral alignment and their appearance has been more or less consistent, suddenly switching these things up creates a problem. It creates backlash, because you're not introducing a character people don't recognize, but you're using a recognizable name. You're saying, this is Tanya, but... A lot of people were looking and going, who the hell is this? This is not Tanya. Tanya doesn't look like this. Now, I know a lot of individuals, especially those in favor of this change, are going to say, well, it's a new game, right? They're revamping everything. Liu Kang is recreating the world. What is the big deal with Tanya having such a new look? Fair argument. Here's my response to it. Blame NetherRealm. And I'll explain why. The issue is consistency, or at least one of the main issues, is visual consistency, right? As you can see with, on here with the Instagram uh, thing here, right, several of the classic characters are coming back. Pretty much every character they have shown so far has been in at least one Mortal Kombat title, and many of them, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Liu Kang, uh, Kung Lao, Raiden, and many, many others, Katana, Melina, uh, have been brought back. And their designs have been consistent with how they've appeared overall in the games. You can look at this image here, right? Sub-Zero looks like Sub-Zero, right? He's in blue. There's, you know, this ice on his hands. Jax looks like Jax. This actually looks like his uh, MK2 look, given that he doesn't have the steel arms, right? But you can look at him, and if you're familiar with Mortal Kombat, you can tell that he's Jax. You can look at Sonya on the right side, right? She's in green, she has blonde hair, she's in her MK1 outfit. She looks like herself. Ken she looks like himself, right? It's not as if they went and then drastically redesigned every returning character's look. Everyone else looks more or less recognizable. Even characters like Kitana and Melina, who they actually did drastically change their appearance. Rather, I say initially Kitana's appearance, then later Melina when they finally caved and, and put her in, 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 in MK11. But they drastically changed uh, Kitana and Melina's appearance in Mortal Kombat 11, going from looking kind of like white or Hispanic, which is how they have more or less looked ever since their debut in Mortal Kombat 2, right, to then making them Asian, which was 
completely out of left field. No depiction of them prior to Mortal Kombat 11 in the games had them as remotely Asian. Now they're both Asian women, because for those who don't know, they're, they're supposed to be twin sisters, right? But even this change, this visual, visually shocking change that they made to Kitana and Melina, they are still maintaining and holding on to. So everything else, more or less with all the other characters, is fairly consistent. If you're a Mortal Kombat fan, if you're an aficionado, if you know what the characters look like from previous games, you'll know what they look like here. You won't need names. No one's going to have to tell you that the dark-haired man in blue is Sub-Zero, or the black dude with the... So, with the c cigar is Jax, or that the guy in red is Kenshi, or that the blonde uh, lady in green is Sonya. You'll know this. You wouldn't need their names pointed out here for you. Compare this to Tanya, who went from looking like this, and this, to looking like this. This is a case where the change is so drastic you would need, you would need that little name bar telling you that it's Tanya. She does not look like herself, and that is the biggest problem. And the other big problem that we have here is that you have individuals like this person lashing out at critics of the design. I mean, the one person in particular, Black Sage D, people have been coming after this, this dude for days. Because he, he, I don't know, he been hard in the paint. He had a much more critical opinion of this design than I ever did. Uh, but he been very hard in the paint about this. He, he, uh, so he didn't like it. He doesn't like it as a look, and that's fine. That's fine. And the poor man has been accused of everything under the sun, of being a racist, of being a sexist, of being a self-hating black person, of, of attacking the actual face model. Who actually, I've seen the pictures of her, and, and I'll include tweets uh, showing what she looks like. She's a young, youthful-looking girl. Like, she's beautiful. And they took her face and they made her look like herself like 20, 25 years in the future. Right? This is simply too jarring a change. Believe it or not, as a comics fan, this reminds me of when they revamped Carol Danvers for the Captain Marvel mantle. They didn't just take Carol Danvers, as she had more or less been up until that point in 2012, and just put her in a new costume, right? That was going to get criticism no matter what, but it, at least it just would have been a costume change. No. Anybody who was reading comics then will tell you, they altered Carol's build. They altered her physical appearance. She became slimmer. Her, her facial structure changed. Everything changed, and they went with this much more masculine, androgynous look for her, right? And, and similar, similarly here, they have simply varied too much. They have gone too far, and they've made the character unrecognizable, especially when they didn't do that for other characters, right? Because again... See here, Sub-Zero looks young, Jax looks young, right, Kenshi looks young, Sonya looks young, right, most of the other characters featured look like the young versions of themselves. It's not that you can't do an older version of a character in Mortal Kombat, you can. We had originally, Shang Tsung was an old man in the very, very first game, right, he was an old dude. Then they made him young, young, young again in Mortal Kombat 2, and now he's more or less young ever since. But even if you play Mortal Kombat 11, right, you'll know that Shang has a young form and an old form, right? They're not doing that for Tanya. They're not taking the same character and showing her at two different times in her lifespan, right? It's not young Tanya and then older Tanya or current Tanya. That's not what's happening here. It's not like when they aged Sub-Zero in Deception. Right? Because even then, he still looked like himself, just older. They came up with an entirely new look. They came up with an entirely new look and then slapped Ta Tanya's name on it and expect you to uh, just accept it. They've even changed her weapon, it seems. From what I've seen of the game, she now has a three-section staff. Historically, she usually has a, a 
a boomerang or something, right? They're revamping everything and slapping a familiar name on it and expecting people to more or less accept it. And it's a sizable base who tend to be a bit, who tend to be long-lived fans or longer-lived fans of the series who are not accepting it. Because think, think about it for a moment, right? Even if the only Mortal Kombat game you've ever played, even if the only MK game you've ever played is MK11, this has been her look since 2019, right? Or whenever it is that she was, I, I don't know if she was DLC or, or if she was already in the game, right? But for about, let's say, three to four years, right? Because the game has been, been going on for years now. This is the design, even, even if it's the only MK game you ever played. This is the design you've known for several years. And then... They go and they totally warp it. I can't blame people for being upset. And again, I want to be clear. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being in favor of this. You have a right to your opinions. But there's a difference between saying, hey, I'm not bothered by this change or I like this change. And then tweets like this saying, oh, now she's unapologetically black. Um, sir. Black people don't come in one shape or size or skin tone or appearance, right? We don't all look the same. I don't look like that. <laughs> because I hope I don't. I've never had hair that long, for one thing. My hair is thick, not long. And I'm just, just to say, I don't mind the braids. Some have said it's, 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 it's a bad look to each their own. My issue is that giant silver piece, like up, up here, you're fighting Raiden. He's going to shock that. He's going to shock your brain. That's all I have to say. Right? Now, that, that thing just bugs me. <laughs> but um, here's what I think is going to happen. One outcome that I think is likely, one that I think is not likely. Let me start with the one that I don't think is likely. The one I think that's probably unlikely is that they'll change this. They might. They might hear the backlash. They might see the drama and give us a look closer to how she appeared in 11 or how she's appeared historically throughout the game. So that's MK4. Come on, computer, <laughs> scroll. There we go. Oh, don't just give me arm, come on. There we go. Or how she's looked in Deception and 11 and, and other games, right? They could do that, although I don't think they will, given how they stuck to their guns with the Sindel Vetcon, despite how it was hated, and, this, and considering how they still have Kitana and Melina depicted as Asian, when again, they were never Asian up until Mortal Kombat 11, so they're maintaining this change, I don't see them making that change. Again, not impossible, but unlikely. What I think is a lot more likely and I would say almost certain to happen, is that they will bring back this look or something similar to it. They'll bring back the MK11 look. They'll bring back the MK4 look as alt skins, as costume packs. Because if there's one thing modern day Mortal Kombat, modern day NetherRealm Studios loves to do, is to strip mine its own past. They always release costume packs going back to the first three games, and whatnot, so I think that's more likely. So I don't think that the, this design is completely off the table. I think it's more likely to come back as an alternate skin. So there may be a way, if they bring this back, or the 11 look back or whatnot, as an alt skin, there will certainly be a way to play as a Tanya long-term fans or MK11 fans or whatnot are more familiar with. But it's not gonna be her mainstay, you know, general appearance for this game, right? So uh, this back as a costume pack, I think is likely. And if that happens, then, you know, sort of, I guess functionally the issue is solved, right? Because then you can just choose this to be her skin, right? But, you know, this still brings up questions and concerns about, you know, NetherRealm Studios uh, view of women, in particular, how women should look in their video games, what type of 
female designs are acceptable in video games, right? They made this an issue in Mortal Kombat 11 by toning down the female characters and claiming that it was for respectability and for practicality. I view those explanations as, at best, well-intentioned but ill-thought-out, and at worst, as lies. <laughs> and, and while I have no confirmation, at least not yet, it would not surprise me if similar mindset, if a similar mindset was uh, employed to justify this design. Again, it would be a fine design on a different character, on an original character, but it does not work for Tanya. And it's especially egregious when they have demonstrated with the other, uh, what would you call them? The other trailers that they've done, they did one just recently introducing or reintroducing Garrus, who was also in Mortal Kombat 11. And Garrus looks like Garrus, he looks like himself. He's black, he's big, he's muscular, he's bald, right? He basically looks like Bobby Lashley, <laughs> right? They didn't change his design, they didn't alter Liu Kang's, right? He's still, you know, a youthful, you know, looking Asian man, god now, fire god, thunder god, something, right? But he still looks like himself, right? He has the long black hair, he has the same facial features or similar facial features, he's still fit, right? Still the same, same skin tone and ethnicity. They may have given them new costumes or a new artistic direction. The artistic direction for this game is very different than uh, MK11 in the previous games, but the designs for the other characters are still fairly consistent. You can look at them and tell who they are, right? Like Johnny Cage still has his sunglasses, right? Kano still has his eye patch. He's still bald, right? They look like themselves. This lady here simply does not look like Tanya, right? Put it on another character, it's fine. Put it on Tanya and, well, you get a talk, talking point that won't die, <laughs> and you get a nearly 30-minute video out of me. So anyway, that's the video. Um, please let me know what you think. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing okay, if <laughs> eternally busy. Also, for those who may be interested, um, there is a stream, a wonderful stream, done by uh, Miss1776 on Twitter. I occasionally pop in on that stream about every two weeks or so and we you know talk about uh you know what we think about comics video games you know different types of character archetypes and whatnot so it's fun if you're interested you can always go to her um, twitter account and uh, you can check it out so uh, i hope everyone's doing well we're getting better and uh, i will see you around and those are my uh thoughts on tanya <laughs> the face that launched a thousand Twitter beefs. Anyway, have a good day and night wherever you are. Bye.